Sometimes things work out in such a way that you realize that the intuitive interface for a GPS system in Mexico is not quite the same as the interface for a GPS system based in the United States, you know, solely off the shape of the roads. Right. So and that's something you have to account for. Yeah, it's obviously something that you have to consider when you're considering a GPS design for Mexico or the United States. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the roads are more modular. You may be thinking, what's a modular road? What does it mean to be more or less modular than other roads? And uh, my answer to that question would be, I'm not going to give you a whole class. Right. On, you know. Yeah, you're not going to give me a GPS class right now or no. a class in road building for that matter. No. Uh, are we, so what's the, are we're ready we to live go. right now? Ready to go. We're live. We're rolling. Tape's rolling. Man, yeah. I got a pretty bone chilling story from work. Oh, really? Now, are we going to wait on Sarah, do you think, or just going to roll with it? I, it's, it, this could be, I don't know. She's doing something. Is she doing, she's, is she doing wake? Is that she's what she's doing? doing wake. I gotcha. All right. Well, it could be super old school, just you and me, I guess. Uh, Yeah. All right, but I'd be okay with that. So let's hit, just just get rolling. Welcome to a Shin Show, a special father son edition. I'm Pete Shin, joining you on a Shin Show with Nick Shin, my son from an undisclosed location in the Midwest. Hello, Nick. Hello. It's possible, yes. possible that Sarah Shin, your sister and my daughter, might join us as well. She's on the background right now doing some important work i don't know what kind of work but it's important i know that yeah, she's in the vicinity she's in the proximity ready to go at all times yeah that's very good now you mentioned you had a bone chilling incident to relate uh, about your work i presume yeah i said bone chilling that's kind of uh, it's a little exaggeratory <laughs> exaggeratory exaggerated yeah. even yeah is it hyperbolic if i, if I may is it yeah. hyperbolic i see yeah oh uh, yeah but um I don't know. It was just kind of cool. There's this Chinese girl I work with. Her name's Tiffany. And oh, uh, no, well, hang on. Is she of Chinese national origin? Is that what you're saying? She's not actually from China, is she? Oh, she's from China. Oh, yeah. she is. She, she was born she in speaks, China. Yeah, she was born in China. I see. Yeah. So she's Chinese American, though. Has she since been naturalized? I think so. She, I'm not exactly sure. You I'm haven't checked her papers. Yeah, I right. haven't checked the paperwork myself. <laughs> Leave that to the professionals, <laughs> people who care. Right. But uh, I mean, she sent her daughter over to China for a year. I see. So, to but stay with Mima. So she's old enough to have children. Obviously, this this person. Yeah, I think she's a little bit older than me. Okay, mid twenties then. Yeah, but with yeah. a child. Yeah. Out of wedlock or in wedlock? In in wedlock. I see. Okay. So Tiffany's married. She's from China. She's at your China. work. Oh, hey. We're joined right now. Are you joining us, Elsie? <laughs> yes. Oh, Elsie's joining us. She's on in the pod. So I guess it's not going to be an old school father son thing. Oh, I can't. No, it doesn't need to be. No, it doesn't. No, no, no. No, it's all good. It's all good. Getting very strong. Get the fuck out of here. No, bye. not at all. Elsie's here now. She's joined us. Live. I think Sarah's joining us too. Okay, good. She resolved her thing. Not right. joining you dead like Jeff Epstein. Hey, Sarah's if that's back. What you mean. Sarah's back. All right, Sarah, welcome the back. The amount of idiocy I must deal with. Yeah. All right. So let's. We're just going to restart things, and what I'm going to say is that we're welcoming in, welcoming in now, daughter Sarah Shin, live from an undisclosed location in the Midwest, and spouse Elsie from an undisclosed location in Maryland, on the East Coast. I mean, on the East Coast. It's not in Maryland, if that's what you think. You might think that. I don't know. Anyway, You'd so so here's where we're at right now. Nick is telling us a bone-chilling story about his work. It involves a Chinese-American girl that he works with, woman, really, young woman with a child named Tiffany, who yeah. is, is has of Chinese national origin, which I presume is of some kind of relevance to the story. Yeah, it's all of all relevance to the story. It's not okay. I I mentioned it was bone chilling. I yeah, just want to did. go back and reiterate that it's not bone chilling. Oh, I see. I, I was exaggerating a little bit there. It was just, <laughs> so it's, it's a little bit. It was a little bit like, wow, holy shit. This okay, kind of real. All right, it's real. I like to ask her questions because she's from China. Okay. So I like to ask her questions about like you know what I don't know what it's like in China to do yeah. you know and things. You know, just, I don't know. So when she's walking by and I was like, hey, Tiffany, do you believe in God? And she says, yes. And I says, are you a Christian? And she says, yes. And I'm like, isn't that illegal in China? And then she's like, she didn't understand what I meant. She didn't know what the word illegal meant. 
So she handed me her phone and she's got like this crazy like, like type in words, words in English and then it comes out in, in Chinese. Yeah. So Anyways, get get right up on that mic, okay? Get right up on that bitch. I'm up on it. Can you not hear me? No, like you, it's you, in my mouth. It's just like super echoey for some reason. Don't know why. Like you hear too? Yeah. I do too. I had to turn my shit down. Hmm. Weird. I don't know. Do you think that's because I could be too close? No, you Are sound we? great, Sarah. I don't know what the issue is. Something with something with Nick's setup. Wait, so you... you is st- your mic plugged oh, all the way in again? Wait a minute. Once you just did that, it was all better. Whatever you just what? did. Yeah. Whatever you I just... did nothing. I did nothing. <laughs> I asked her you, half you of took, a question. You took your hand away from the mic, and then you... Yeah, I don't know. You, you just did you one of these. some weird superstitious voodoo type shit that we have to get right every time in order for it to work. Like it's it not even be. science anymore. It's yeah. just down all the per- superstition. There's a ritual that must be undertook. ritualistic sacrifice yeah. so okay you, so you gave the girl gave you her phone do i sound all right yeah you sound great okay so she says she doesn't know what the fuck i'm saying so she hands me her phone and i type in the word illegal and then it some chinese her phone fucking up. blows up it yeah goes on, it gets, the, a siren goes off no police start streaming in from, eat, from <laughs> no, all the this, doors right no, chinese because police. this isn't china <laughs> right Right. And I hand her the phone and she looks at it and she nods. She says, oh, yes, yes, yes. And then she thinks for a second. She's trying to tell me what to say, but she doesn't know how to say it. So she types some Chinese characters into her phone and hands it to me. And I look down and it says the government is very powerful. And I was like, oh, man, that's that's kind of scary, huh? Right. Isn't that scary? Like <laughs> they could come get you just for being a Christian or whatever. And she thinks for a second and she rubs her chin and then she types something else into her phone and i'm like oh shit what is she gonna say now and then it comes out in english and it says government agents are always doing surveillance and i was like oh my god that's uh that's pretty scary right and then she's like yeah uh i like america better and i was like yeah it's uh, <laughs> it's pretty nice here isn't it yeah what with the absence of government surveillance and all yeah, it's crazy because she doesn't like every time she speaks to me, it's so fucking hard to understand what she's saying. She doesn't speak English so well. So, like, I don't know. I just for a second, I guess I was expecting that to translate into her own native language. So when she typed out a message so clear that the government is very powerful and always watching, it was, you know, that's just some shit that I say to be funny. You know what I mean? Right. It's not your reality. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. It's true. Then, we yeah. can't even get a government agent to listen to this podcast. Yeah, no kidding. It's yeah. a no microcosm kidding. of the entire Hong Kong China protest situation right there. Yeah. 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 But uh I I just say that cuz I remember when I was younger watching some documentary about people going on missions to China and I was like and it's like, you know, if you're a political prisoner, we all know what happens to prisoners in China, all right? <laughs> Rusty the organ harvesting clown <laughs> comes through. And- right. We've been all over the organ harvesting situation in China. <laughs> yeah. All right, so like it just kind of seems like I don't know. What's I don't know. It doesn't right. seem worth it to me to go over there and try to convert people to Christianity in a place where you will be killed. For. Well, especially since you're not a Christian. So I mean, <laughs> there's that. Yeah. I mean, that well, uh, I know, but can't you? Even if you are, can't you just send your thoughts and prayers? Don't people just do that all the time? What do you got to do with it? <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess I. My point is that look, look, look. Through the Lord, all things are possible. Okay, so right. Jot that down. First. But it depends how many <laughs> good oh, Christian you stickers context. you want on your sticker chart, because the more stickers, uh, you get prizes in heaven. I did not know that, but yeah. uh, Sarah, what did you say there? I, I missed that. I'm sorry. Start your day the holy way with Christ checks. <laughs> They're crunchy and delicious. All right. Anyway. And anointed. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. So my point is, yes, I agree that there's a lot of risk to those who are proselytizing in the name of the Lord in China. I agree. You'll be locked Probably up other for that. places, too. Probably not just China. Probably not just China, but uh, China's, uh, you know, they're, they're definitely China. But yeah. definitely China. Yeah. They're an atheist nation by At definition. Least China. At least. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm all for atheism, but I'm not for enforcing atheism any more than I am enforcing Christianity. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't <laughs> Can I get an amen try on to that? enforce people to think a certain way or to believe something. Like, if I don't believe it, I don't believe it. You can't just tell me that I have to or I'll say that I will so I don't get my organs harvested. But <laughs> So you do believe. <laughs> so you do believe. So you do believe. <laughs> I believe I've read, I've read it. read it. Yes. Anyway, all right. Uh, uh, Aquatine Hunger Force reference deluxe. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, 
uh, that's an interesting story, and it does tie right into some of the big news of the week, which is that peaceful protests in the hundreds of thousands in Hong Kong continue day after day after day. What will be the outcome? Will Beijing roll in with tanks and crush the protests, or will they relent and allow Hong Kong to have a separate system as they promised when it transferred from British to Chinese rule in 1997? Who can say? So here's what's going to happen. China plays the long game, always known for playing the long game, and they know that coming in with force is not going to be acceptable. But the protesters done fucked up by accidentally beating up this dude that writes for, like, some of the tabloids in China, some of the government-sponsored tabloids. Um, They didn't know who they were dealing with, apparently, so they beat the fuck out of him. So now he's, like, this hero in China for, hey, they beat me for no reason, so these people are bad. So they're actually inciting the, you know, Chinese nationalists, the people that feel a lot of pride in their Chinese-ness, not that that's a word. Um, So they're hoping that the people in Hong Kong who are loyal to China will rise up and just fight the others, and it can be this nice little civil war on Hong Kong, and the government never has to get involved. Mm, Uh, Interesting thought, but here's what I would say. China is much more interested in projecting strength than projecting any sense of tolerance. I would be shocked if the protests continue. I would be absolutely shocked if China doesn't just crack down. Because guess what? What's anybody going to do about it? Yeah, also... You know know what I've learned from these protests? How to put out tear gas. Really? How do you put out tear gas? I haven't been paying attention. Apparently, the 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 most concise way I've seen is they have they're like carrying traffic cones and they put the traffic cone over it and then you just pour water on it. Well, I'll I, be darned. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. you know what? I've often thought that I needed traffic cones. Yeah, just well, to, to protest, carry around for sure. Just well, around. Yeah, just around. I mean, you never just know around. when you're going to want to cordon off your own. Uh, yeah. Spot. So you, I, I was going to say you mentioned them being peaceful protests. Well, mostly have- peaceful, except for that beating up that one guy. Well, mostly peaceful. maybe mostly peaceful on the part of the protesters, but not the fucking police, dude. I've seen so, so, so many videos of Hong Kong riot police beating the fucking shit out of protesters mercilessly for minutes and minutes and minutes on end. I like when I think of these Hong Kong protests, peaceful is the last word that comes to my mind in any way. And here's what I read. Yes. I read that these Hong Kong police aren't from Hong Kong. They're from mainland China. And what the government, what China is trying to do is that they're trying to get the fucking their police force over there to beat the shit out of protesters all the time so that eventually the protesters will fight back and start inciting violence so that they can justifiably roll the tanks out again. Right. That sounds about right. I think that's uh, that sounds like a very concise estimate of what's going to happen. Good analysis. Yeah. yeah. And they well, will do I it. I had made it myself, but I read it on Reddit. So. Yeah. They're, they, you know, China is, uh, and Taiwan better watch their step also, is what I would add. Yeah. yeah and it is like, what is anybody going to do about it? Even if they start doing some Tiananmen Square-ish type shit, and now it's media, internet is such that everyone would know what's happening in real fucking time. What are you going to do? What is anybody really going to do? Start World War Three over it. Hey, listen, we weren't ready to start World War Three in 1989 over Tiananmen Square when we were the undisputed hegemonic superpower on Earth. Yeah. So since we're not willing to do it then, actually, that was a little before we were the undisputed superpower hegemonic on Earth because the Berlin Wall wouldn't fall to November and Tiananmen Square happened in May. So we still had the Soviet Union that we were dealing with that hadn't collapsed yet, but still, nevertheless. Get your shit straight, dude. Historically speaking, we weren't willing to do anything about Tiananmen Square, and that was, you know, that was an absolute massacre. So it, you know, remains to be seen. We'll be very upset about it. We're going to... Yeah, we could, yeah, definitely for a couple of weeks. We could very well issue some strongly worded protests. And some more tariffs, of course. Yeah, a handful of tariffs would be good. Speaking of which, tariffs, 10% on all Chinese products, Dow Falls, 800 points, economy slowing, looks like... Recession is coming. Just to gird your loins. All right. Cool. I, say I bring love it. paying $75 to fill up my gas tank. I say bring it. Bring it sooner rather than later. It's the only way we're going to not have Trump for another four years. I don't know. Listen, it, recession, first of all, will not cause your gas prices to rise. It'll cause your gas prices to fall. Mm, you that's know not what happened in 2008. Yes, it is. It most certainly is what happened in 2008. Gas- uh, my, my, my recollection of gas prices during college begs to differ. Yeah, well, you're not paying attention because I will tell you that uh, in uh, 
well, let's say August of 2008, gas prices were about 350 a gallon. In December of 2008, after the collapse of Bear Stern and the absolute crash of the economy, gas prices were $1.39 a gallon. Okay, well, maybe she's talking about January of 2008 until yeah, tec- August Okay, look, technically, technically, I didn't graduate until May of 2009. High school. So, high school, yes. Yeah. And yeah. then attended college for four years where gas prices were on the regular, three fifty a gallon. Yeah, so, but the economy was getting better. Was it? Yeah, it was slowly but surely. Anyway, look, here's the point. Let's not just let's not spend a lot of time blaming each other for high gas prices. The point is that uh, the markets do not seem to like these tariffs. Let's just go ahead and blame the real culprit. Late stage capitalism. Oh, late stage what? capitalism. What? I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, yeah, it's whatever, dude. We'll be okay. Yeah. But we'll recession None of this matters. Recession is coming. It looks like. But then again, recession is always coming. Thanks, Paul yeah, Revere. Isn't it, isn't it always recession and then deeper recession? No. And it's like, okay, we're mm. out of the recession, but we're still in recession. Here's, here's oh, it's the going question. back to deeper again. No. Oh, no. <laughs> where's where's our economy's therapist? That's what I want to know. What do you mean? You mean like someone, oh, oh, no, that's depression, not recession. I mean, if, if the economy was depressed, yeah, then it would need to go to a therapist. But for recession, no. No, just mm. over-the-counter medication. Has tried therapying the, the economy? I don't think so. Much like a receding hairline, you're just going to brush it forward and it doesn't happen. <laughs> well, anyway, look, so I guess we're not going to have any kind of in-depth economic discussion here because that's not what we do. No, so it's boring. <laughs> which then which then leads us to two paths. Either we can talk about personal news for the week or we can talk about Jeff Epstein. Oh yeah, let's talk about Jeff Epstein. That motherfucker. This Jeff, just I'm in. so fucking mad. This I'm just so in. Mad. Jeff Epstein still dead. Still this also dead. just in. The only thing everyone agrees on is that it was not suicide. <laughs> I think it was suicide. Well, he got suicided, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> He sure did. suicided his ass, all right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, his lawyer said he was cheerful, told him he'd see him in the morning, and then, uh, you know, promptly killed himself in such a way that it looked like somebody strangled him. So, there you go. Yeah. I'm so fucking mad about this. I mean, it was gonna, come on, this is like real, real. He had so many, you gotta imagine how many high-level names he was willing to give to the prosecution. I know. That's why I'm mad. Okay, but Sarah, you got to consider like the people on that list. They this is like the level of power that people always talk about, where they're talking about cabals and shadow guys. So I'm talking about point. billions and billions and billions of dollars is what these people who are on those lists have. I guarantee it. Uh huh. So and it's so, the, and nothing, so what, they shouldn't they should. It's nothing this, for them to send an ambassador to a guard and say, "Oh, you know, it'd be great, you know, if." Maybe we give you $100,000 in your bank account yeah, like for the rest of your life if you suicide this guy. And the guy would say, oh, I don't know. And he's like, or we can suicide you. What do you do? <laughs> and then he's like, okay, I'll That doesn't you. make me any less mad. That makes me more mad. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. All right. But it's so, still like, you know, that's that was going to happen no matter think? what. What did you expect? Yeah, come on. I'd like to hear more about this ambassador. The ambassador to to he prisoners. He'd probably be wearing something like a yellow poncho. His name would be <laughs> like Hank. He's a personal ambassador, not a national ambassador. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not like an ambass, like a U.S. government employee or anything. I mean, like he that. wouldn't be. Wearing... Although maybe. I mean, let's be real. <laughs> he could be. He could be. His boss could be. Is almost certainly would be. But whatever. I'm talking about someone like, like the dude from Breaking Bad, Mike. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, something like that. A former government employee now in the private sector. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. A fixer, if you will. Yeah. A cleaner. A contractor yeah. making that real money. The wolf. Yeah. All right. The young wolf. All right. Well, very good. Well, I don't know what happened. No one does. And that's why everyone is frustrated. And I can understand why you're angry, Sarah, because ultimately for the victims, it means an absence of justice. Yeah, of true justice. Lack of yeah. ju- Lack of closure you know but, but you know thing. how often do how often do abuse victims actually get closure rarely not often yeah yeah and then even if like what even if he's rotten in prison it was what he's sitting in club fed wearing slippers going golfing every it's, other friday it was more along the lines of 
those victims being able to face him in court and be like, look at what you did to me. And not just him. Not he gives a shit. But. Not just him, but the other wealthy and powerful men, mostly, but also women who partook, part, who uh, took part in that Partici- abuse. Yeah. Another, Let's just face it, our entire it. society would probably have collapsed because all the people in power would have been brought down. Which well, is the I'm, real reason he had to be suicided. I think there's exactly. a lot of reasons, or I think there's a lot of people also who weren't doing it, but were there on his little private. Or knew eye. about it, yeah. Knew about it, but they like, what, am I going to fucking, am I going to tell on him? If I tell on him, then I'm getting suicided. You know what I mean? So I guess I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. But now there's a, you're on a list. Jeffrey Epstein's personal computer of people who attended that party that night. Whether you did anything or not, you were there and you did know and you didn't say anything for whatever reason. You know what I mean? Well, so here we go. Like that too. But this is the kind of thing that makes the average yeah. American feel like there is a shadowy cabal that runs everything. The deck is stacked and the system is rigged. That's isn't this the sort of not. situation? Thanks, Coke brothers. If you have if you have a hundred billion dollars in offshore Cayman Island accounts, like what can't you do? Seriously. <laughs> Well, they did. They did catch his ass and put him in prison, and then suicided him. The, the one guy, yeah, one him, the scapegoat. Oh, we got him. We got the bad pedophile. It's all good now. It's all done. The ring's busted. They're all, you know, yeah. everyone's good now. The ring of one, right, yeah. right, because the one guy's dead now. Right. So now it's all good. No, it's not all good. He had accomplices, and there were, you know, participants participants, all kinds of whatever descriptive words you want to use for people who helped and were there. Listen, uh, I would just see justice because I, I want you to be aware that the British royal family and specifically Prince Andrew never had sex with that woman. OK, thank you. According to a statement from the royal palace. I hope you're getting a check for that. I hope so, too. And you know what I'll do with it? I'm going to go on down to Ziff's. Fine dining and a relaxed continental atmosphere right there in Invercargill, New Zealand. Proud fake sponsors of a shin show for more than a billionth of a millennium. After I have my delicious meal at Ziff's, I'm heading over to the throne room. Heavy tattoos in Invercargill, New Zealand as well. Also a proud fake sponsor of Ziff's for more than a billionth of a millennium. Or thereabouts. Hey, uh... (laughs) I'm just trying to bring it down because this abuse stuff, man, it's hairy. Yeah, Heavy. it's hairy. It's hairy. It's slick. You'd it's think they'd at least shave. At <laughs> God, why, why'd you bring up shaving? Because right. you said it's hairy. Yeah, it can be. It's right, here's a good shave for you. Yeah. Uh, I saw this documentary on YouTube. Watch the whole fucking thing about the amazing Jonathan. Do you know who that is? Oh, yeah. The amazing Jonathan is a magician. Comedian. Yeah, he's a magician comedian. Yes. And he's dying. Uh, oh, you've, you've, we've talked about this before. Did we? Yeah, we, we well, sure great. did. It's great, uh, great documentary. Saw it on YouTube, but now I saw that it's on Hulu. Okay, so you can I watch the whole thing on YouTube. So it's better now. You know what else is on yeah, Hulu? What's that? Is the Fiend Fire or or Fire Festival? Yeah, fucking yeah. documentary. Yeah, yeah the, the huge multi million dollar scam. Yeah, it, it was a scam. But that's you know, a good, uh, that's a good con artist right there. That's that what guy. you get for trying to be an influencer. Well, they were. I mean, yeah. he was. He did. He, he got money. Yeah. He got. He scammed them motherfuckers, and he was laughing all the way to the bank. Unless really you're talking well. about the Instagram people, in which case, yeah, they are suckers. Hey. Well, suckers. Yeah. Suckers. Hey, did we talk about Clockwork Orange last time? Uh, no, we did not talk about Clockwork. Orange. I watched that for the first time. A I've never seen it. Ago. Is it good? Yeah, I liked it a lot. But let me say the first thing: watch it with subtitles. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, they speak in basically, um, yeah, in a Super fake language. Super hardcore 60s British. It's like a, they're trying to make it futuristic, like it's a glimpse into the future, but you watch the movie and it was made in the fucking 70s or whatever it is. It's like clearly not futuristic. Kind of like Blade Runner or whatever. Yeah, and they use this weird British slang that I don't know if like that's how they talked back then or if he's just making shit up like to sound like future. <laughs> he's making up, slang. making it up. It's supposed to be a combination of Russian and English huh. in the future. And I forget what it's called. It's like NASDAQ or some, it's some kind of fake <laughs> language. Yeah, I want to read the book now, and the book's not that long. I've seen people with the books. And I've read the book, in fact. It, the yeah. book is it, The movie is quite faithful to the book, in fact. Yeah, the book's short. The book's pretty short. It's only like 120 pages. It's worth a read. I recommend it. Yeah, I want to uh, read it. But yeah, it was a good movie. All right. So I want to get back to Ziff's for a second. Because I saw Sarah on Facebook. You posted Ziff's menu. No, I didn't. 
Somebody did. Uh, Some... I I tagged you all in a post of theirs. That would be me. Okay, you post. Uh, you tagged me in a po- Ziff's post. Is that what happened? Yes. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, it did uh, not turkey. look continental, by the way. It looked perfect. I'm not sure what it looks like, but I wouldn't say it's continental. It looked both relaxed and continental to me. In a continental atmosphere, he would say. <laughs> but can we just discuss once again what the fuck is? A Nobody <laughs> fucking knows. That's my point. Listen, I've Have been, you ever the... been sitting in a club or something. You're like, wow, the atmosphere here is just like continental. You know what I mean? No, no I don't know what you there mean. Is, what the fuck is that? There are definitely no tectonic plates under my feet right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this like place that we're in, the atmosphere suggests to me that it's like one big continuous. Continent. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. <laughs> you need to go to a doctor, bro. What are you fucking talking about? It means European. That's what it means. Okay. Yeah. Well, Why? Europe's not the only continent. What the fuck? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> continent. There's more continents than Europe. Right. I mean, our continental when I eat French toast, but that doesn't mean anything. Oh uh, well. I all I can tell you is that that's what it's like at Ziff. It's yeah. like Europe. If you want to know what a continental atmosphere is, there's only one place on Earth to truly experience. <laughs> and that's that Ziff's, atmosphere. my friend, right there in Invercargill, New Zealand. You want to know what all the hype's about. That's right. You need to go check it out. All right. So good. I'm glad we cleared that up. What were we talking about? Oh, Clockwork Orange. Good film. Good book. Recommend it. I read. I haven't watched shit. I haven't read shit. I've been sick all week. Oh, so. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. How, how? But you look so cute in that one picture on Facebook. That's from like two weeks ago. Oh, I see. No, I, <laughs> she looks I, like I, I, now. I, mass, I curate Facebook very carefully. All right, but that's smart. It's so important to take care of your image. Yeah. All Is right. it? No. No, <laughs> no it's not. But, but but I like to feel superior to all of everybody else on there. So you know. Uh, uh. I discovered in the last week that moonlighting as someone else on Facebook can be a lot of fun. Oh, that, oh yeah. <laughs> so I was out of town and um, my shit got cracked because I, I clicked on a video. That, I mean, it's a classic case, right? Somebody sent me that I trusted uh, something that I thought, oh, I wonder what this video is. And I pressed, uh, pressed it and then my account got jacked instantly. And then <laughs> it's worth saying that theirs had also gotten hacked and that it wasn't like this trusted person was just fucking you. No, no, no this trusted person was definitely not trying to screw me over, yeah. nor was I trying to screw anybody else over that I got these crazy videos from me. So the point is that um, what was the uh, substance of these videos? There was no video. Uh-uh. It's just an attempt. It was just a link. Uh, uh, log me in. Here's my credentials link. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, obviously all my shit is now out to the wind, but I've changed all my passwords and so on. But the point is that the beauty of it is that I've heard from people that I hadn't heard from in years. Or I heard from Thanks, people you hackers. hadn't heard from in years because I logged onto your account and was talking to everyone as though I was you. That's right. So Elsie had to kind of take care of that for me because I was out of town. Yeah. By out of town, I mean out of the country. Yeah. But I think it's an important lesson about, you know, setting up two-factor authentication, having people backed up to take care of your account should anything happen to you, blah, 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 blah. Yes, important lesson. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. <laughs> it was a lot of work for Elsie, I can tell you that. Because what I well, would have done, had it just had I not had Elsie on the case, I just would have deleted the entire account. Then I would have hit the gym. Then I would have lawyered up. And then you never would have seen that <laughs> Zips post you were tagged in. That's true. Yeah. Boy, and what a what a contribution to my life that Zips post made. Am you I right? now know what Continental looks like. It, it looks like I Ziff. guess. Yeah. Right. Or, or at least we've determined it. Yeah. Or decided it. Yeah. So the, all that happened. All right. So and then the other thing that happened this week, just out of curiosity, I mean, um, our apparently our president is strongly considering uh, making an offer on Greenland. Because we can what certainly does afford that mean? it. What does it mean? It means we buy. What do you mean making an offer on green, like to purchase? Yeah, you didn't see that. He'd like to buy Greenland. Who? Uh, the president. Oh. Uh, Would he like to buy it like, personally or on like behalf of the United States? No, I'm not understanding. I, he definitely doesn't have enough. Donald Trump never had enough money to no, buy. Greenland. No, no, no. He's he's saying that the United States should buy Greenland. So With that all it's this now money 50, sitting around that we have, because we're not in yeah. yet. It's the 51st state or 52nd state now? Well, no. It, what would be, we, we don't have, we all still only have 50 states on. We I treat know, it like our bitch, like Puerto Rico. to the one place. Where does it 
place in fucking South America. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Like, <laughs> you already you have. About? You already <laughs> have, son. I, I think you mean Puerto what Rico. What is the Mexican place? <laughs> <laughs> is it Puerto Rico? Yes, we treat Puerto Rico and Guam like our bitches. Uh, yeah, it's so yeah. Puerto Okay, yeah. so I remember there was like some vote or some protest years and years ago. People wanted to make that the 51st state. Y- yeah, Am that's I'm making that up. No, you're not. But uh, to call Puerto Rico that Mexican place or that place in South America, <laughs> that's I not very that. wrong. <laughs> it's I in the Caribbean. Know, man. I figured someone would take the ball up and know what I'm talking about before it got to that point, before I made a total ass. No, it's, it's like tried. watching it devolve. <laughs> I tried to stop you. I tried to. Uh, that one place. Well, you should have just stopped there. That one place in South America. Yes. Brazil. All right. Anyway, um, man, boy, you really, we should really not have sent you to public school in Alabama. <laughs> that was a mistake. I see that now. Yeah, it was. <laughs> That's on you, bud. <laughs> it is. It is. I accept my responsibility for that. All right. Moving on. The point is that, yes. Yes, that's exactly what he has in mind, is purchasing it for the United States, much like William Seward purchased Alaska back in the 1860s. Yes, yes. So that's what he had in mind. But as you can imagine, the Greenlanders, okay, so Greenland is in fact an autonomous area that is a part of the Danish kingdom. But they run their own affairs. And both the Greenlanders and the government of Denmark have said, hmm, Nice try, but Greenland's not for sale. And then Denmark offered to buy the United States. <laughs> because they could fix I'm our health care system, I yeah. think, was the statement. Yeah. So, That'd be cool. Yeah. I'd be down with that. <laughs> You'd Denmark like now. to convert to Denmarkies or whatever it is. <laughs> Denmark, that they... The Danes. Now. Denmarkians? Yeah. That's definitely not right. No, it isn't. The Markians. The Denmarkians. Anyway, so, yeah, it looks like neither one is going to buy any, but no one's going to get bought and sold here. No so land bull. No cash will exchange hands. What's that? Why did this even come up? To distract us from everything else because he's fucking crazy? No. What do you mean? What? Why, why did it come up? What do you mean? Why did he want? Why did he just wake up in the morning and say, you know what? I'm buying Greenland today. <laughs> yeah, have you I'm seen literally anything else he's done? What is surprising about this? Yeah, just, so what's the tactical advantage? What are you gaining aside from green? More, more, more. It's making America great again. Right. It's Make actually Greenland America again. We're going to be sick yes. of winning. That's right. It's MAGA making Greenland America again, as if it ever was. MAGA. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not in totally insane, actually. In fact, uh, President Truman offered to buy Greenland from Denmark. It's just in a strategic spot in, in the Arctic. So, I mean, there's some legitimate reasons. You can't think that that's actually what's motivating that, hey, let's buy Greenland. Uh, But at the end of the day, it's not totally insane. Only in the current environment is it totally insane. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the wealth of oil reserves in the Arctic. I'm sure that's just uh, completely unrelated. Actually, there there is a lot of both oil and other mineral deposits in the Arctic that will become readily more accessible as we continue to warm things up around here. And currently, Denmark, Russia, and Canada all lay claim to it because they just do. So if we got Greenland, we'd be in that fight. Well, we still are. I mean, Alaska, we've got plenty of Arctic territory in Alaska, plenty of it. And so we don't actually need more to be in the Arctic, to have claims to the Arctic. We've got plenty of good claims to the Arctic. But But some more couldn't hoit. Yeah, but not that hemisphere, you see. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? Alaska's in the Western Hemisphere. Greenland's in the Eastern Hemisphere. I, Very close. I don't think. I'm not uh, sure. Okay. I'm not sure that's true. Uh, I mean, I look at a map, dude. I there was <laughs> look at a map. It's pretty. Hemisphere. It's self-explanatory. <laughs> well, it's a circle. Quadrants now? Is there four hemispheres? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, there's Eastern, Western, Northern, where, where the line is, and then that's where it is. Yeah, I mean, it's if you look that's at a map I mean. and uh, Greenland is either to the right or to the left of Alaska, depending how you're looking. Because it's a right. significant this amount. Part, this part of the conversation is going off the rails <laughs> and totally be more boring. So I have a. Wow. Couple... So it's like most of our conversations. <laughs> right. Or what you're if we're saying. talking, if we're discussing the geography yeah, of Greenland, Greenland yeah. Which, I mean, come on. <laughs> Who gives a shit? We know it's in the north. Who gives a? It's like winter is coming. All right. All right. So um, yeah, moving on. <laughs> oh god okay moving on i have a question yes. actually specifically for you dad oh. since you are 
a historian, right? Uh, of sorts. All right. So there's an ask Reddit that said historians of Reddit. What is the strangest chain of events that you have studied? Oh, the strangest chain of events. You want me to give you the right answer, right? One of the answers right now, oh. the most popular answer yeah, right give, now. Give me the most popular answer right now, and then I'll tell you whether or not it's horseshit. And actually, this <laughs> this isn't a the most popular answer. It's just a popular answer that I like the best. Okay, this, so this is a popular answer that you, Nicholas Shin, like the best. Here it is. Yeah, probably how Pepsi briefly became the sixth largest military in the world. Okay, I'm listening. 1959, President Eisenhower wanted to show the Soviet Union how great America was. So the government set up an American national exhibition and sent Vice President Nixon there. Well, Nixon and Soviet leader Khrushchev got in an argument over communism versus capitalism. As it got heated, the president of Pepsi stepped in and was like, bro, Khrushchev, chill out, have a Pepsi. Khrushchev, most of... Okay, he says Khrushchev most of loved that shit. Oh, he's trying to say must have loved that shit. Yeah. Because then the Soviet Union wanted to permanently bring Pepsi over to their country. The problem is that their money wasn't accepted throughout the world. Instead, like true Russians, the Soviet Union traded vodka for Pepsi. This was all good until the late 1980s when their contract was going to expire and vodka couldn't cut it for payment. So instead of so instead, they traded Pepsi a fuck ton of submarines and warships for three billion dollars worth of Pepsi. Sadly, instead of terrorizing the seas and shooting harpoons at their enemies, Pepsi decided to sell the fleet to a Swedish scrap metal company. Okay, that's interesting. I have I have an, a random other one. Yeah, it could have uh, been an East India trading company. The breakfast yeah. cereal that we all eat and enjoy now didn't really exist back in the day. So uh, William K. Kellogg was wandering around thinking, "Hmm, all this masturbation is a real problem." And all these people even having sex in their marriages, awful. You should not have sex. You should be celibate. And he decided that it was spicy and exciting foods that was the cause. So he invented cornflakes, and he decided if everybody ate cornflakes, we'd all stop being a bunch of sexual beasts. I, I'm not sure if that was Kellogg or Post. I think it's it was Kellogg. Yeah, it, it's definitely Kellogg. Kellogg. Definitely Kellogg. All right. It well, was definitely someone. That's That'll really all the man. Yes. <laughs> that poor man. So eat your cornflakes and stop masturbating, right. okay? <laughs> I'm not sure that eating cornflakes is any bar to masturbatory behavior. Onanism, if you will. No, I think it makes people more sad. So what do right. you do to cheer yourself up? Right. Well, eat some cornflakes and masturbate, apparently. All right. No, so uh, I guess what I would say is there are... What we're what so what you're looking for is a an historical coincidence essentially that would make a big difference in how something would turn out, right? Yeah. Or just an interesting yeah, historical, just like the, a strange series of events, things one thing that led to another, such that you know the shit popped off. You know. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, here's I can't think. I'll think about. Well, let me get back to you on that. Okay. Okay. Because a lot of things happen. You know, history's big. There's history's big. There's a lot big. of good ones, though. There's a lot of crazy shit that just you know. Oh, there is. I mean, think yeah. for example. Just think about this for example. At some point around seventy thousand years ago, some children, not from their parents, but some children, figured out how to communicate with one another in an abstract way. And from those children who managed to figure out how to communicate with one another in an abstract way, human beings began to have a capacity to believe in an intersubjective reality. In other words, they began to be able to create fiction and to believe in it. And from this, we developed religion, which allowed us to have a communal fantasy, which allowed us all to work together towards greater and greater goals. How do you know they were children and you weren't there? Well, because the parents couldn't do it. How do you know? Because ultimately, you'd have to do this as your brain's only plastic enough to develop a new way to communicate when you're a child. And that is the way it is now. It, the it, longer you wait to learn a new language, the harder it is. Still harder. But you know, if you go back to ancient history, who knows what created the circumstances that allowed us to have the cognitive ability to rule the planet? Uh, there's a couple of theories. One is the stoned ape theory. 
and that a bunch of monkeys yes we know ate the the mushrooms yeah it's the mushrooms did it it's the fungal fungal interaction mushrooms did it man here's another cool one though i want to say real quick (laughs) yeah (laughs) during the black plague people thought that cats were spreading the disease and so they killed the cats and then but the cats were killing the rats who had the fleas that were really carrying the disease and so when they killed the cats the rats multiplied more and the disease spread further Okay, and the only reason there was never any cure or uh, vaccine for it ever. People still get it to this day. The only reason that it uh, faded away is because there was a huge fire in London in the poor part of the city and all the poor people and sick people died. At once. And, yeah, was, at it was, once. Like, it was and, contained. It was yeah. A, so it literally yeah. burned itself okay. out, which is a which is actually a protective factor for some of these truly virulent diseases. I mean, yeah. I mean, they stopped spreading at a point when there are no more hosts, and so you quarantine a place, everybody in there dies, and then the you know the the, the pathogen dies as well. Well, I mean, you still got to burn it though. Oh yeah, I mean, you obviously got to burn a pile of corpses. I mean, wearing a funny, you know, B-class, B-like death yet. mask. <laughs> All right, we can take care of that then. No problems. Still happy. <laughs> Is there anything you can do? No, no, not a thing. All right, All right. anyway, um, yeah, so that's, well, here's, here's one more interesting historical fun fact, which is that simply this, if Adolf Hitler had been better at art, you know, World War II and the Holocaust may not have happened. Maybe. Or maybe it would have been started over art. We don't know. No, I mean, but Hitler would never have come to power if he had been accepted into the Art Academy at Vienna. That's true. He did. Well, I mean, I don't know. Some other shit. Like, it's clear that he was inclined to be a crazy motherfucker. Even if he had got accepted, maybe he would have, you know, a teacher of his would have got his, grinded his gears, and then next thing you know, he's writing a fucking book. And then. Mine come. Yeah, I don't know. Probably not. Anyway, the point is. Lots well, of no way to know. There's no there? way to know. There isn't. Well, so think about this, okay? From a historical standpoint, if a group of Serbian assassins had not managed to shoot Archduke Franz Ferdinand, if Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo in 1914, July of 1914, and oh by the way, the only reason they managed to do that was a total accident. That they lost their security. The driver took a wrong turn. Then he took another wrong turn. What a total series of events that led to the deaths of tens of millions of people. Yeah, How about it kind of that? Makes you, it that kind of makes you wonder man. about. Uh, yeah, <laughs> who's really at fault here? Like, who? Where? Where was the biggest fuck up? Like, you yeah, know what I, I mean? think it was just a bunch of little fuck ups that like just collapsed. I know, the but there had to be one thing that someone had to do right. Like that if they would have done that one thing right, it wouldn't have gone down. Like yeah, that. it's Franz Ferdinand's driver. You can blame yeah. about 100 million deaths on Fran Fer- Franz Ferdinand's driver in Sarajevo on July 1914. That dick. Oh. Fuck that guy. That idiot. Right. Can you. So isn't that something? Could, yeah. If can, can, Now, that's pressure. If you think about that, I mean, did this guy, did he kill himself? Well, uh, it doesn't matter. Even if he there's no way he could possibly have understood the scope of how bad that fuck up was, you yeah. know, even after however old he was, even if he lived all the way through World War One, he couldn't have possibly known that there would be another world war based on how crippled Germany was because of the first one that he caused by fucking up on his directions and getting his boss killed. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Could, there's no way he could understand the scope of how bad that fuck up was. Eh, I guess not. But now there's someone who can understand the scope of how bad a fuck up was is Mao Zedong. Well, I mean, he could. He's dead, obviously. But well, what does Mao Zedong have to do with Franz Ferdinand's driver? I'm just saying, like, he also <laughs> caused the death indirectly of I think it was 45 to 50 million of his own people. Try 70. Okay, whatever. I mean, at a certain point, it becomes just numbers, right? Yeah, yeah. But the most in recorded history, I mean, I'm pretty sure Mao Zedong is responsible for the most deaths in human history, recorded human history. Uh, But he, that's what I'm saying, Franz Ferdinand's driver couldn't have understood, like, how bad his fuck-up was, how long-term it would be. But someone else who can also cause as much, if not more, death and destruction, particularly famine, 
can't, you, you know, in a certain circumstance. Well, I so and that was also like a weird series of events. It's not like he meant to starve his own people. He was just like the fucking the birds are fucking up the crops. Let's kill all the birds. And then they killed all the birds. And then the bugs ate all the crops. And then everybody starved. <laughs> and so on. Yeah. Yeah, I like my Franz Ferdinand example better because Mao Zedong knew he was an asshole. I mean, yeah, you're right. The Franz Ferdinand story is better because that driver could have been a fucking cool guy. He right, yeah. right. probably was. Could he have was just been cold. having a single bad day. Yeah. A single bad day. He has normally he's a super professional driver, no problems. He's going to get you where you want to go at all times. That's why he's picked to drive the crown prince of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Right. But that particular day, he forgets. He stayed up too late the night before. Right. And he didn't get his coffee. Or his eggs weren't cooked just the way he likes, and he was thinking about it. That bitch cook. I told her I wanted him sunny side up. And she's going to get to me. Oh, easy. What the fuck? And then, oh, I missed the turn. Okay, well, let me just. And then, World War I. Oh, shit. Someone shot him. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, really, it was that cook's fault. Well, right. <laughs> Well, I mean, now we're getting into a little deep in the hypotheticals here. It wasn't staying up too late checking email on the phone or anything and then uh, losing passports or something. No, he wasn't no. doing any of that. All right. So, um, all right. Good talk. Uh, Sarah, do you have any examples, historical examples you'd like to share? Fuck no. I don't know shit. All right. <laughs> all right. If we were talking about computer engineering, who knows? But no, I don't know shit. The biggest fuck up is is the the gross mismanagement of 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 self reporting with the O rings and the and the whatever shuttle. That's that's the worst thing. That is a bad that's, thing. The, that's a good yeah. example that, that right there. Wasn't, that wasn't a series of coincidence. That was a direct mismanagement, a dis, a direct uh, mishandling of of you know. You couldn't have possibly needed that O ring. No. Well, so the engineer knew it was going to be bad. He told his managers, and his managers said, "Well, fuck it, we got to hit this deadline." So you know, yeah. Again, late stage capitalism for the win. Well, that, that uh, uh, you're right. It has less to do with capitalism. Yeah. Just, Jake. Should, Actually, should we explain right, to the on, audience anyone who doesn't understand this reference? All right. So look, here's what happened in 1986. They wanted to launch the shuttle basically in time so it could be overhead for President Reagan's State of the Union address. That was kind of the hard deadline. They had on this particular shuttle, they thought they'd kind of gotten the shuttle program down. They'd been flying the shuttle for about six years on and off. And so they found it would be so routine that they actually put a civilian on the shuttle, a teacher named Kristen McAuliffe. And so students all around the world were watching this shuttle launch. That was another factor that they had a plan for a particular time and a particular thing. And a particular date. The problem was this. On the day of the launch, which I believe was January 18th, uh, could have been, but in, in that na- time frame, it was late January of 1986. Anybody of a certain age remembers it well, as I do. In any event, the temperature at Cape Canaveral was much colder than usual. It was around 32 degrees or 34 degrees overnight, something like that. Very, very cold. And as a result, the rubber O-rings that connected the various stages of the solid rocket boosters became brittle. And this was a known issue. And so the engineers at Morton Thicol, who had manufactured those particular solid rocket boosters, they passed along to the NASA leadership. Well, actually, the engineer in charge actually passed along to his leadership You should not launch in these conditions. Do not launch in these conditions. And that warning was not passed along to those who were giving the go and no-go decisions at NASA. And the shuttle blew up. And the shuttle blew up while millions of children watched on TV. And uh, and so, yeah, that that happened. It was a bad deal. I'm not saying it was the singularly most traumatizing thing of my elementary years, because remind you, I did watch the Broncos lose the Super Bowl numerous times. But for first grade, it was rough. Yeah. Yeah. I won't tell you how old I was when it happened, but I was not in first grade. I was in the workforce. All right. In any event. (laughs) Okay. Kind of gross. Making it weird. Yeah. Like I like. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, so that's a good example, Sarah. Like everyone Let's likes. just rewind. Last All right. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> I got a better one. I got a better one. You okay, got a better one? I'm going to make this one real quick. Okay. This is one that I actually had read about a while ago. It wasn't in this thread that I saw, but it, it was about this kingdom that was 
in the path of the Silk Road that Genghis Khan was establishing. Yeah. And he had sent this caravan, like this huge caravan from all these different countries with all the silks and spices and gold and treasure and all that bullshit. Right. And gonna, and it, they, yeah. they had to pass through this kingdom, like yeah. on the Silk Road. And the guy who was head honcho, the king. Actually, I think he was just a governor, actually, oh, yeah. not like the actual king of the kingdom, but whatever. Governor saw that caravan coming through and he's like, oh, hold up right there. Killed everyone in the caravan, took all the loot. And then Genghis Khan was like, hey, I'm pretty sure you got our stuff. I'm going to well, he sent an ambassador to go tell the guy, like, we're pretty sure you have our stuff. Wait, so, is this the same this? yellow poncho ambassador? I just need to know. Hopefully. Okay, I well, mean, maybe he's an ageless, timeless, you know, creature. Awesome. Figure. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Well, no, 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 it can't be. And I'll tell you why here in a second. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because he went there and said, hey, my lord says you have our shit. And he's feeling very gracious today and said, if you just give it back, then we'll just enslave you or whatever. And then you just have to pay us taxes forever. And uh, then the guy, the governor, killed that ambassador, which is like a big no-no. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not supposed to shoot the message. So then... In retaliation, Genghis Khan erased that entire country off the map so completely that only in his records of the event itself did they exist. And what was the name of the country? Dumbass or D- Dumbasserton? Yeah. Damascus. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's a question, though, that's worth exploring. Was that maybe just propaganda that he put forth to be like, hey, bitches, watch the fuck out. Look what I'll do. I, mean, I don't is think this he even needed legit? to do that. Yeah, he, he was Genghis Khan. He didn't really need a lot of propaganda. Yeah, I don't think he needed propaganda at all. He would just show up and be like, hey, you're going to pay us or we'll be back tomorrow. And then if he was back tomorrow. <laughs> right. Then every one of you motherfuckers would have your head on a pike and the yeah. rest of you would be sold into slavery. Quite. Yeah. I'm just saying but it could be our campaign. If you just paid the man. It wasn't that bad. He encouraged you to worship your own gods and just pay them a moderate tax. Yes, much like some of the... Uh, Persian empires of old. But in any event, that's neither here nor there. What what was your point, though? Your point was that... Uh, My ha- point is that that was a crazy... Uh, that was a crazy fuck-up. Yeah, you know what I mean? Big mistake. Why would, you're going to steal his shit, and they know, everybody knew who Genghis Khan was. You know what I mean? You've heard the stories, like, of all these countries falling. Yeah, but... And then he- you're going to steal his shit and then send an ambassador... When he sends an ambassador to be nice one more time and say, hey... You can just give it back and this goes away and you're going to kill that dude. Yeah. Come on, man. You know what, though? That guy didn't believe the propaganda. No, he didn't. Yeah. He paid for it. Sure did. All right. Well, we got to bounce pretty quick here, but uh, did you guys watch the fights last night or what? Oh, my God. They were glorious. It was a good night. The co-main and main event were fucking phenomenal. Elsie's leaving. She she was not taking it. I'm not saying UFC makes me want to stab my eyeballs out, but I'm not saying it doesn't make me want to do that. Yeah. So, well, bye. Bye. See ya. Well, we uh, Nate Diaz fought as the co-main event, fought Anthony Pettis, and Nate Diaz has taken quite a hiatus. I think it's, I can't remember his last one. I want to say it was Conor McGregor a number of years ago. Maybe. Uh, keep in mind, anyone who ever listens to this, if you listen to this, I'm a filthy casual, okay? You're and a filthy I'm, guy? Oh, what do you mean? Filthy casual. casual. Oh, like, what? let me explain what that means, that I'm not like, oh, yeah. I don't, yeah, you're, you're not bath casual at best. Okay, well, I'm a casual. Okay, I'm not like I don't have all the numbers and stats like perfectly right, or maybe even right at all sometimes. <laughs> but it's the general gist of what I'm saying. Right. I think is okay. I don't know. Anyway, the here are the facts that Nate Diaz had not fought for at least two years. Okay, so he had been rusty, ring rust a little, a little bit. You would think. Yeah, but he's fighting Anthony Pettis, who's. A good fighter. And Nate Diaz mauled Anthony Pettis for all three rounds, which is great because I love Nate Diaz. So and he so won he won. Good. A unanimous decision. And then uh, the next fight was the main event, which was Steve Bay Miocic and Daniel Cormier. Right. Daniel right. Cormier was beating Steve Bay's ass for like three rounds straight. But it like, was a five-round bout. It was a five-round bout. And then in the fourth round, Steve Bay just started using his fucking left hand and it hit DC in the liver. Like Ooh. over and over, Ouch. and then Ouch. as soon as he crumpled, you know, from that he last pounced. liver shot, he just came over top and punched him in the fucking face with his right hand. Like three, he knocked him out. So but wow! He, but Stipe really was getting his ass whooped. Like I really thought he was going to get knocked out for three rounds, and I was, you know, he's getting his ass whooped, and then he just started punching that fucking liver in the fourth round, and then knocked DC out and won, won his championship back. Well, that's a heartwarming tale. 
Yeah, it is. It sounds like an entertaining Jason contest was as well. Pretty gracious in his defeat. So he was about to retire, though. He took his gloves off. He thought about it, but then he said, "You know, I don't want to make decisions based on emotions, and I actually have to go talk to my wife." So yeah, but I would Good be. For him. Yeah, Not I'd be surprised if he comes back, though. He's old. Yeah, he's like forty-two. I mean, that's no. he. That's that's old. That's or old 40, to be in a ring, man. Forty, but still old in UFC. Very much That's so. still old to be punching people in the face for a living, for a- sure. And getting your liver punched. Yeah. And get, yeah. Getting your liver just tarnished, too, because they were big <laughs> shots. Oh, oh. I didn't think it was going to work, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, Stipe looked tired. And, it like, I saw the shot. And even DC said it in the post-fight interview. He's like, I have, he had hit me with that right all through the fight, and I didn't really feel it. Like, it wasn't that big a deal, so I wasn't scared of it. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, that's why you do that out. body work, though. You do that body work because it pays off in the later rounds. Well, it didn't. But he didn't do it in the earlier rounds for it to pay off. He just did it like he hit him just in the liver, like probably six times in a row. But all those other punches before he executed this game plan, like he just looked gassed, you know? Yeah, he would miss. DC, And then I would say I would think like even if he had hit DC with that, I don't like that looked a little weak. Of course, it, of, you know. It's never weak because they're big fucking dudes, but still didn't look like full power shots. But then all of a sudden in the fourth round, like he's still gassed, but then like, yeah, you know, he might have rope. Yeah. Well, congratulations to what's his name? Stepe Miocic. Close Close enough. Stepe Miocic. Miocic. (laughs) <laughs> there's I could, no ch anywhere it's all c's so <laughs> but it's Stipe miocic i guess miocic okay Stipe, i call Stipe i just miocic. call stipe meow mix <laughs> stipe meow mix i like that meow 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 all right you've I now know. been served with a cease and desist <laughs> right all right so two good fights out of uh several i noticed on that main card though there were no female fighters on the main card Maybe in the prelims there were, but not on the main card. I don't think I did. I no. think there were some in the early prelims, but we didn't watch those. Also, so. Yoel Romero and Paulo Costa fought. Oh, yeah, that was pretty good. And uh, who won that? Paulo Costa, I think it said by unanimous decision. I didn't like, I feel like I heard the announcer say that, but that couldn't have been right. Like, I, Oh, I, I think it was. Well. All right. Yeah. Well, so somebody won. Good. Well, Paulo Costa won, but it, there was several times where – Yoel Romero had him like had Costa up against the cage and was beating his ass. Like I don't understand how he could lose every round. Well, apparently like every judge's scorecard. <laughs> well, apparently he did though. Yoel Romero's also 42. 40 something. Really? And, he- and that dude is a fucking I just can't believe he's not on steroids. It's so hard for me to believe he's not on steroids. Well, why isn't he? Well, why wouldn't he be? Because they test him, presumably. Yeah, they te- he's actually the most tested fighter. Because no one can believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And he actually, well, he, yeah. Yeah. That's another story for another time. All right. So, uh, what do you got uh, going on next week? Anything of interest? <coughs> I'm moving on Tuesday. <laughs> you're, oh, so you're finally moving on Tuesday. <coughs> yeah. Sarah's going to go to the doctor and uh, get treated for her tuberculosis. That'll be good. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Not. Cholera. Yeah. <laughs> is it cholera? Is that what it is? Black death, whatever it is. Be both. Hope you get treated. Anyway, so uh, you're moving in. What do you want for a... Elsie asked me, what do you want for a housewarming gift? Oh, a housewarming gift. I don't know. I suggested wooden salad tongs. (laughs) (laughs) For all the entertaining that you do. (laughs) Whatever, man. (laughs) Maybe a blender. Everyone needs a blender. Actually, no, I think... I think one of those has been procured. Okay. All right. I think. Pretty sure I saw one. Do you have any pots and pans? Yeah. You don't cook, though. No, but <laughs> right. her uncle gave her a bunch of kitchen stuff. Yeah. Okay. Any chance? Uh, any chance Taylor want to be on the pod? I mean, she's invited. No, no. no. See, that's not her thing. No, I understand. I mean, I don't. You know, sometimes when you when you get on the mic, it's like not. All of a sudden, it doesn't feel like a normal conversation anymore. Really? You know what I mean, it's uh-uh. not like a. Well, we can, you just can't be 100% candid. You know what I mean? Oh, I like think... you can when nobody's listening. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Yeah. It sounds like I have some weird dark reservations. That's not true. <laughs> I just say, you know, like yeah. things that are a little off the wall, a little crazy. If yeah. you really know me well, you already know. Yeah. True. It's okay. not a big deal. It's definitely nothing to 
report me to anyone about or <laughs> if that's what you're thinking try to tranquilize me or anything <laughs> right it's nothing where you would say hey the government should be watching me at all times yeah it shouldn't yeah nothing like that <laughs> to my knowledge unless i was in china obviously yeah well i think i'd be good in china yeah what do you think well, yeah i don't know yeah hard to say but uh the point here is that um you can't think of a single housewarming gift that's the point. So we're going to go with those wooden salad tongs. <laughs> you brought it on yourself. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it up to you. Okay, got it. Or maybe just some cash. People like that. People like money. Enough cash for one pair of wooden salad tongs. <laughs> <laughs> or similar item. <laughs> maybe a wooden napkin holder. You know what I'm one saying? One voucher for a pair of wooden salad tongs. <laughs> of your choice. <laughs> That's salad tongs or us. You know, or you know, you know what I'm talking about? Those wooden ring napkin holders. Maybe you'd like some of those. Why do you have cloth napkins? <laughs> well, we, I guess we'd also. Have, this is getting more expensive by the Where second. Where the fuck do you think I live, dude? I'm not. I'm not going to have my servants put my cloth <laughs> napkins with my. Golden napkin receptacles. <laughs> you might. I don't know. I mean, uh, I guess all of that would imply that you would need a dining room table as well. So My 600,000 square foot complex. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So we'll think about that. We'll In think Northern about California that. overlooking a vineyard. Yeah. Well, good luck moving into your actual apartment in an undisclosed yeah. location. Yeah. The good thing about it is I don't really have shit, so there ain't much to move. Right. You, know? you just kind of need to show up with a bag. Here I am. <laughs> yeah. Here yeah. I am. Bag's <laughs> optional, too. Yeah. Just show up with an outstretched hand for the key. And a money order in the other one. And you're all set. That's you're it. All, you're good to go, buddy. Oh. Oh, where's Where's your things? I'm wearing them. Oh, okay. I got it. Right. Yeah, this is, you're looking at it, buddy. <laughs> Where's your possessions? I, I have them on me. <laughs> this is all of them in the world right here. Let's get started. Uh, let's begin our life together. <laughs> let's begin our life together, landlord. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it should be noted that you're actually going to have uh, someone else that you're living with. Uh yeah, so, but this is the conversation I would be having with the person handing me the keys. Oh, I see. Yeah, <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> Let's begin our life together. <laughs> uh, okay. And Sarah, what are you doing next week? Nothing of interest. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Murphy goes back to school for the, like, this is her first full week and oh, everyone at work has abandoned me. So it's just going to be lots of work. All right. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. Same here. Got, got some work. I'm going to go see another rocket launch this week. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's not too cold. No, it'll be nice. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're gonna hopefully keep... those O-rings are tippy fucking top shape. <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea right there. Yeah, safety first. Safety is no accident. That's my motto. Just make sure the O-rings are good and everything else should be fine. Uh, good point. All right. And uh, so I think that's it. Um, yeah, I guess um, I guess there's nothing else to, to say, is there really? Are we done? Uh, I think we're done, um, y'all. Okay. Uh, 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 oh, I uh, couldn't find my harmonica for a second. It was in my back pocket. That's why I couldn't find it. So have I was you just, marked which way is up yet? Yeah, I have. Well, not directly, but I just am looking more carefully these days. <laughs> <laughs> have marked it ocularly with my eyes like I should have been doing the entire time. <laughs> like anybody does with anything. They look at, really. But this time I mean it. All right, here we go. A Shin Show is a production of Shinfluence and features the voices and opinions of the Shin family, which are exclusively and entirely their own. It's brought to you on a fake basis each week by Ziff's Fine Dining in Invercargill, New Zealand, and by The Throne Room Tattoos in Invercargill, New Zealand as well. Both of them fake sponsors. They're not real. They contribute absolutely nothing to this podcast other than a recurrent bit. Join us next week on A Shin Show, where you can find... By the way, you can find us on... Really, wherever you get podcasts, 
if indeed you want to find like some kind of trash. Hey, and before we leave, let's not forget to have a shout out to Ben and a shout out to Chris. Hey, Chris, I realize this shout out comes late in the podcast, so you might not hear it. But shout out to you, our one actual listener. We haven't even confirmed that Ben's a listener, have we? No, we do the shout outs way at the end to really force you to listen to the whole fucking thing. <laughs> that way we know. That's yeah. right. That's that's the only way to know for sure. That's how insecure we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we so don't insecure. know if Ben's listening. We don't know if Ben's yeah. listening. Yeah, we shout out to him every week. Man, what a lucky guy. How lucky he is. Well, be sure and join us next week when we'll hear Nicholas Shin say, Pizza pie for the family is what the spiders would like to eat. <laughs> well, I don't know why we're going to hear that. I thought we'd hear the beaver song again. That's what I thought. You put me on the spot. I was just blue sky in this thing and it felt right at the time. Right. Well, you should know it's coming. You should know it's coming. All right, let's try that again. Maybe we'll do, maybe Sarah will come up with it. No. Be sure and join us next week. No. We'll... <laughs> Absolutely that's not. That's the final word. <laughs> All right. Well, love you, kids. All right. Love you too. Drive safe, you know, eat your milk. Right. Get eight hours of seatbelt. Snort Drink your vegetables. Your yeah. Comb your back fat. So on. <laughs> that one might hurt a little bit. Yeah. It's going to sting. It is. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Anyway, kids, hope you have a good week. Uh, Yeah, you too. All right. So what do you need any help moving in? I'll drive up with my truck. <laughs> well, it's on Tuesday, so, but no, thank you. I'm good. I have a team of strapping young men. Youths. You, well, yeah. yeah well, if, I mean, they're under 60, if that's what you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely, probably, at least that. All right, so, um, you know, I feel kind of weird that I, I've never so much seen a picture of this gal you're moving in with. Um, I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to say I should, I have any kind of veto power or anything like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I'll get a picture for you. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm really in the general proximity, so it's you know, oh, yeah. it's not like you're gonna run into her at the supermarket or anything like that. <laughs> well, that's true. I and just you don't... never directly ask, like, "Hey, let me get a photo." <laughs> well, I just don't want to be embarrassed, you know. Oh, hey, I didn't know you. it was you. So, <laughs> I mean, okay. she, she happens to show up in D.C. or something, you know? Yeah. Right. Right. Anyway. Wow. Well, good luck with that. Yeah, I think, uh, thanks. Yeah, you feel, feel good about it? Yeah, I do. Good. You're good, then you do, I do. Outstanding. About that, about this apartment itself, I was looking at the reviews right as I signed the lease, and I was like, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> all right, good luck getting anything fixed. Yeah, all that shit. Mm-hmm. But then again, I was like, it's like that at my old house, too. Right. Like, landlords are just shitty. Yeah, they are. I should know I am one. Quite. Well, yeah. Especially when you got a fucking... But whatever, I don't... It's cheap, so... Well, and that's... Yeah. You get what you pay for. Yeah. Although, even expensive places can be shitty. Yeah, and I know two people two people I work with live in those apartments. And they well, I thought they hadn't said anything about it. But the one guy, Josue, he you know, he's like he likes it, but it does, he says like the people above him are really loud, but I'm like, I'm fucking the people above me want to get loud, I'll just turn my TV up like until it's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So that's not a problem. It's not an issue for me. Right. But then the girl, I was like, Kelly, got any complaints about the place you're living? She's like, don't live there. Why would you? I told you <laughs> not to do that. And I was like, you didn't tell me shit. She's like, well, you should have asked. Don't go. And I was like, okay, well, I'm doing it. That review's in. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. Under no circumstances. Live on the street before you live there. <laughs> but she lives, she's lived there for two years, so. 
Yeah. So apparently it beats living on the street. That's what yeah. I take from that. Yeah. It's not so shitty that she would need feels the need to go live somewhere else. Oh shit! Don't you got to be at work in ten minutes? No, I got to be at work at three. Oh yeah, got it. I'm gonna have to leave in ten minutes. Oh yeah, forgot about the time difference. 